Not sure how to begin implementing changes in your organization or your church? I'm going to walk you through the five-step strategy for making sustainable changes. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I post a new video about biblical leadership advice. I use the successful five-step strategy for making sustainable changes with my coaching clients, and now it's your turn. Step one, gather your team. One of the biggest mistakes that leaders make when they know that changes are essential and needed for success for their organization or their church in the long run is that they make the changes solely dependent upon themselves. But the two things that you really need in order to implement successful, sustainable changes are buy-in from the people that are going to be changing right alongside with you and input. You need the right kind of input from people that have different perspectives and even experiences and backgrounds. So make sure to gather your team, the right people around that table before you do anything else. Step two, start with the end in mind. When we start tweaking things without actually having a very clear intention about why we're tweaking them and what the big vision is about changes, people get super frustrated, super disillusioned, even angry and bitter about the changes that are being made because there's no clear reason why. So you need to start with the end in mind before you start making any actual changes to the what or the how or even the who within your organization or church. So step two, start with the end in mind. What's your bigger story? What's your vision? Where are you headed? What does three years down the road look like for you, for your organization, for your church? What's the picture on the wall that you can invite people into? Now, step three is define your outcome. Most people get outcome and output confused. Outputs are the things that we can measure. There are activities. There's the things that we do. So how many people showed up to an event? How many people did we give books away to? How many hours did we spend training people? How many people came to our training event? Outputs are the things we do. An outcome is the change that we affect in people's lives. So usually we'll use words like increase or decrease when describing an outcome. The outcome is the actual change we want to see happen in people's lives through what we do as an organization, as a business, as a church. And often it can be really helpful to keep our outcome to 10 words or less so that it's super memorable and easy for everyone to have your one main outcome top of mind when they're going about their day to day. So step three, define your one big outcome. Now step four, where are you now and how did you get here? Before you start thinking about what needs to change in order to achieve your outcome, you need to pause and look at where you are now and how you got here. And what I mean by that is you need to look at what values are in use right now, what theology is in use right now, what beliefs are in use right now, because without looking at what's under the surface, the how we do what we do, not necessarily the what, but the how and why we do what we do, if you start tweaking things on the surface level without really getting down low and examining the how and why you got to where you are today, nothing is going to change in the long term. It, your changes will not be sustainable. So before you start thinking about what needs to change, you need to pause and think about how did you get here? What are the values that are in use right now? What is the theology behind what you do? What beliefs are driving how and why people are doing what they are doing right now in your organization and in your church? Because these are the things that we really need to get at before any surface level tweaks are made if we want changes to be sustainable in the long run. Because everything that we do and say day in and day out are driven by our values, our priorities, our theology, our beliefs, the why behind the what of what we do. You can try and be more diverse, but unless you're actually addressing values or theology or beliefs that are currently at play, if you simply have a diverse looking group of people around the table, if nobody's voice actually matters, nothing has changed. 
And the same is true with the church that I used to work with. They grew rapidly and they saw that they had to fill a big leadership gap. So they hired a bunch of great leaders. And within three years, they had a turnover of at least 10 people off of staff in a short 12 month period. Why? Well, they changed what was on the surface level. They knew they needed a better leadership strategy, but they didn't change the leadership strategy. They simply hired a bunch more people and kept leading the church in the exact same way they had when they were a super small church plant. So nothing changed about how or why they did what they did. They simply changed the what they did. So make sure before you actually start tweaking a thing and deciding what needs to change, you consider where you are now and how you got there. Now, step five, identify what needs to change. Now that you've gathered your team, you've figured out the vision on the wall for where you want to be even three years from now. You know your main outcome. What change do you want to affect in people's lives? You know where you are today and how it is that you got here. And now you simply need to figure out what needs to change in order to get from here to there. How do you get from where you are today to the vision that you see on the wall? So how do you figure that out? Well, you look at the values that are needed in order for you to be successful and sustainable in your changes over here. And you look at the gap between where you are today and where you wanna be. You look at the practices that are in use right now. Are there some new practices or behaviors that can support the new values that you know need to be in place in order for sustainable change to be made throughout your organization or your church? Are there roles that need to change? Are there ministries that need to change? Are there priorities that need to change? Likely, there probably are. So as you consider where it is you want to go and where you are right now, now is when you get really clear about what exactly needs to change in order, in order to get from here to there. Now, if you want my exact guide for leading change in your organization or your church, then below is the link to download my leading change checklist so that you can have it in hand and you can go through each step with your team as you talk about how it is that you're gonna go about sustainable, successful change moving forward. And be sure to check out this video next on your role as a leader while you're leading change and the leadership skills that are really essential for successfully leading sustainable change in your organization or church.